As a child, I felt like I glowed. My favorite personal adjective was bubbly, and my least was bossy. I was small, but large. Space occupied, unabashedly. I did what I pleased and overachieved. Felt individually represented by layered tutus and mixed match knee socks and t-shirts that told me to continue shining. I talked too much in class but always felt bad about it and never, ever shied away. I fell in love with performing at age nine, carrying on for years. How could a person resist becoming someone else, if only for a moment? This is what I have been chasing in all those years of playing pretend. I stepped out and became a mirage of characters who weren't me, but also were. Girls who played pianos and fell down rabbit holes and worked at apartment stores and belly danced and birds that were trusty sidekicks. I played dumb for the first time in my short life. Prayed, mourned, fled, held vendettas, waged personal wars, mimed shock and delight and vexation. I sang about adjectives and Jesus and rainstorms. I danced fully, freely, and joyfully. Made people laugh, got so lost in scenes that I cried, and fell head over heels, shamelessly filling rooms half illuminated and half in the dark, in which all of us got a little lost in a story, in a pocket universe, a matinee mass missing persons. Only 219 days until Beethoven's birthday. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> But the older I got, the more I shrank, shriveled into myself, recoiled from vibrancy, and jerked back from any belief of the right to take up space. I became small, tucked away into corners and desk chairs and between the lines. I wanted people to like me in high school, and I felt awkward, flimsy, my ultimate existence too embarrassing to bear, humiliating. I wanted to be quiet and bashful and blind like everyone else appeared, brainwashed and boring and beautiful because of it. I couldn't stand being in even a peripheral vision, let alone performing in front of an audience. I will always crave approval above all else. One might call it a weakness. So I quit, abandoned myself. Retrospectively, the years I acted were the happiest. In these places and moments, I was the most me I may ever be. It's odd. Even now, while I find the footage endearing and look back on it fondly, my first thought is that I look pretty lame. Quitting acting is something usually kept packed away, but occasionally I'll see a show or it'll cross my mind and I'll wish I never shrank at all, never gave up something I truly loved for my own inability to live with myself. I told everyone I was gonna be a star. Annika is 12 years old. She loves to dance, act, and read. She's currently learning to play the clarinet. Her favorite movie is Jesus Christ Superstar. This will be Annika's sixth, eighth, she's ninth, twelfth performance. Her number one role model is Adele, and one day hopes to be famous. Dear Annika, you are a star. You brightened our stage with your smile as Keep well as your costume. Keep clapping those arms and spread your feathers all always over the world. Always go for your dreams, no matter what anyone says. I will always believe in it and remember you. You are our shining star. Love you, mom and dad. You will always be Princess Annika to All me. the world's a stage, and you So I star. hear you're a princess. You are wise Pretty beyond sweet. your years and very talented. You did such we a love great job. with you. I can't wait to see you become a TTS star. You made star. me cry every night I saw As you. As you know, I thought you were a shining star. How could star amazing up and off stage? You will go far in life, and I, I hope to see you again side. real soon. Come back to do more shows with Keep us. Keep on acting. And have a true talent for acting. I hope you continue doing theater. You are a star. When does a child stop loving themselves? Give up on their dreams? When does a child grow out of the person they want to be? said, if you're not the type, you're not the type. I didn't know Shakespeare said that. <laughs>